St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Dawn from River Ebert, Nova Scotia. This Mass is being offered in memory of his wife, Irina, who passed away in November 2011. For relatives and friends, both living and deceased, for the person who changed his life, and for those who have no one to pray for them, by choosing to remember Irina in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada, and on their behalf, I thank you. In the Gospels, Jesus tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we are to get to be men and women who are holy, men and women who are people of God, then we should follow Jesus, who is the way, live as lives of integrity, and to live according to the way of the Lord. For the times we have failed to do this, let us ask the Lord's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and plead for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously grant to your church, O merciful God, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the church may be devoted to you with all our heart and united in purity of intent. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Ephesus, Paul sent for the elders, and when they came to him, he made his farewell. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own Son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some even from your own group will come distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease, night or day, to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the message of His grace a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this, I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus. For he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said, that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. 
summon your might, O God. Show your strength, O God, as you have done for us before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings bear gifts to you. Sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over his life, and whose power is in the skies. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you had given, have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world, for, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. David sang for us in that gospel acclamation, Your word is truth. O Lord, make us holy in truth. It seems to be obvious. How can we be on the path to holiness if we are men and women of lies, if we are not men and women of integrity? 
In our first reading, Paul is at the end of his third missionary journey. He is at Ephesus, or just outside Ephesus. For three long years, he worked in Ephesus. He first went to the synagogues and preached, and when he was thrown out of the synagogues because the whole message of Jesus Christ asked for too many things, asked for too many sacrifices, and people didn't want to hear him. So he hired a hall and would teach them for three long years. But Ephesus was also the city of the great pagan goddess Diana. She was a god of fertility, a god that caused a lot of people a lot of business and work for their daily living. There were a whole guild of silversmiths who made statues of Diana, and they were sold all over the city. If you want to have some idea about that, go to Lourdes and Fatima, and you will see whole shops selling candles. People offer, they put the candles, they light the candles to stand in their place. And so also here in Ephesus, they began to sell these statues, and then suddenly they found that People were not buying the statues because people were accepting Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. And so, of course, there was a huge riot in Ephesus because they wanted Paul out of there and they wanted the message of Jesus out of there because it was destroying their livelihood. And so Paul, although he spent some three beautiful years, they're left on a sour note. He was working in Turkey, the, bar, the southwestern course of Turkey in Ephesus. And then he goes up north into Philippi um, and then down through Macedonia into Corinth and into Athens. Now he's on the way back. He wants to be in Jerusalem at the time of the great feast. And as he comes down, he comes. He's in a hurry, so he takes a boat from Philippi down to Miletus, very close to Ephesus. And he calls them from Ephesus to meet him at the seashore. I can relate to that because I worked in Chepster for three years and again in Thunder Bay. I made many friends. And if I ever go back to Chepster or to Thunder Bay, and if I don't see all the friends, they get hurt. And so you can imagine uh, Paul coming to Ephesus and saying, well, I can't see you, I can't see you, I'm in a hurry. So he calls them down to the sea coast, and he gives them this beautiful message. First, it's a message of witness. I have taught you the truth. I have handed down to you what I myself have received. I did not water it down. I did not dilute it. I did not misconstrue it to suit my own needs. In fact, I lived and worked and I did not ask anybody for anything. That was the first witness he gave. He thanked God for their faith and for their fidelity to uh, the regular prayers and to the meeting together, to breaking of bread. And then he gives them a warning. He says, beware, there are people right in your midst who will teach you false doctrines. Listen to the word, the word is truth, and be holy in the truth. Now, people among you will be like wolves, and they will teach you doctrines that are not going to be the correct doctrines. Some of them might misunderstand the doctrines that they teach you. Others might teach you wrong doctrines because they've got vivid imaginations. Still others might do it out of malice to destroy your faith. Paul does not want to hit the panic button. He simply wants to warn them and says, be on your guard. The same prayer that Jesus makes in the gospel, Father, I have protected them while I am in this world. Now you protect them because they are going to be in this world. I'm not asking you to take them out. I'm just asking you to protect them. And we know how gossip and rumor and slander can destroy the truth. We hear it in our own day. Pope Francis has decided to call eight cardinals from all over the world to advise him. As they say, the buck stops at Pope Francis, but he needs these advices, and he decided from Australia, from India, from South America, from the USA, and immediately the word went around 
the Vatican Bank is going to be closed, there will be married priests, women will be ordained, there will be a new legislation for people who have been divorced. Everything that is wishful thinking on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, everywhere. How fast rumor can spread and destroy or try to destroy the truth. And so Paul tells them to remain in the truth. And that is what you and I have been called for. So why on earth do we go after falsehoods? It's because we want, like the people from Athens, to hear something that is new, something that will interest us. And all we can do is, if we stick to the truth, we can grow in holiness. If we move away from the truth, then all we can do is confusion, stress, and, and all sorts of false ways which will lead us away from God. As we carry on in this truth and realize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, as we want to follow him, let us ask the courage and the strength of Mary, his mother, in this month of May to help us, to guide us, so that we as families, as individuals, as priests, as religious, as seniors in old folks' homes, may continue to walk in the path of the Lord. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. For the church, the people of God, called to be the light of the world and to live in truth, we pray to the Lord. For the homeless and unemployed in our country, and for sensible and compassionate response to their needs, we pray to the Lord. For all peoples and nations striving for peace and justice and reconciliation, so that we might live in a more welcoming and hospitable world, and especially for peace in Syria, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick in their homes or in hospitals and for those who care for them, for those suffering from Parkinson's and cancer, and for all those of you who have written in asking for prayers for your special intentions, we pray to the Lord. For Dawn and for the repose of the soul of Irina, our sponsor today, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, your son Jesus taught us to call you Abba, Father. Protect us, your children, and make us worthy of the kingdom you have prepared for us from the beginning of all time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for you, through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Yes, Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate as our dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, has ascended into heaven 
as the angels gazed in wonder. Jesus is mediator between God and all of us, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. Jesus ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people rejoices in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing forever to your glory. <coughs> indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray to God, our loving Father, in the words Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace 
graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of that peace and friendship. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Amen. With those of you at home, join with me in this admonition of St. Augustine. Therefore, once and for all, this short command is given to you. Love and do what you will. If you keep silent, keep silent by love. If you speak, speak by love. If you correct, correct by love. If you pardon, pardon by love. Let love be rooted in you, and from the root Nothing but good can grow. Let us pray. May our partaking of this divine sacrament, O Lord, constantly increase your grace within us and make us always ready to receive so great a gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our thanks to Don from River Hebert, Nova Scotia, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Of Jesus.